This is episode 135, what freedom really means and how to get it. Welcome to Alive by Design. My name is Blake Mallon, and we're here to bring you inspiring people, principles, and practices to help you wake up, move toward your meant to, and feel fully alive. Open your mind, and let's dive in. Hey guys, before you listen to the podcast, I just want to drop in and say I appreciate you for being here, and I'm super excited about this new Walk With Me series. These are solo episodes where I take some time in the middle of my morning run through the Santa Monica Mountains to share some inspired ideas and thoughts on my mind and heart. If you want to join me for any of these conversations live, you can catch me many mornings on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash blakemallon.page. Would love to see you there. Love you guys. Enjoy the episode. Walk with me. So hope all you fellow Americans out there had an awesome 4th of July. All my Canadian friends had an amazing Canada Day. Such a fun holiday, the 4th of July here in America. Just the energy about it. And I think it has to do with, it's one of those rare holidays where everyone here is unified. Like we're all on the same side. We're the same team. It's not a religious holiday where there's different religious beliefs that celebrate or don't celebrate or celebrate differently. You know, it's not a political thing where you're like one side or the other. It's a holiday where everybody's one team. At least that's the way it feels like to me. We're celebrating our, our country, our countries birthday, independence. And I think that's kind of cool that despite imperfection, to put it politely, and so much in the air right now, and so much divide, 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 it's cool to have a day where everybody feels on the same team. And I had an awesome time with my family, won't go into all of it. Those of you guys that follow my stories, you probably saw some fun antics. Uh, but there was a moment on the night of the 4th of July. We were down at our local high school football field, set up a blanket on the 50 yard line, packed house, like the whole community came out to watch the fireworks, lighting them up, right? on the other side of the end zone, so close, so big, laying down and just a cool moment. My son in my lap, my daughter in my wife's lap. So I was just laying back, seeing the smiles on their faces, looking up at just the spectacular firework display. You never outgrow fireworks. You never get too cool for fireworks. You never get bored of a good firework show as the sky lit up and the marching band was playing and just had a moment of gratitude for the freedom we really do have. I know that's cliche on the 4th of July. It is a freedom day. But it's real, and I want to talk to you all about that that word, that concept, freedom, today. And I think it's something that will resonate with all of you, no matter what part of the world you're tuning in from today. Morning. Uh, Because I think the topic of freedom is something that's core, not to a country or where we live, but like who we are as human beings. I think most of us, if we were to do our own reflection and answer honestly and come up with things that are most important to us in our life, things that we want, things that we want to protect, I think high on that list, 
would be some version of freedom. And I want to ask what that means to all of you. Matter of fact, drop us some feedback for those of you here. What does freedom mean to you in your own pursuit? Not in a cliche definition or an answer I'm looking for, but in your own pursuit of what matters. What type of freedom matters most? I think it's a, a layered conversation, at least for me. And I think there's one element of how I would define freedom that is paramount. One element that supersedes. One element that's more important than all the layers combined. It's really the cumulative or the collective of all the layers combined. And it's probably not the definition most people would immediately jump to. And I want to get to maybe what those layers are and, and really what that ultimate freedom I feel is that we all should be not just pursuing, but living. I'm going to take a seat here on the rock. Beautiful day. Sun is out. Woo. can see Malibu, Santa Monica. So when I talk about layers, maybe one thing that came to mind when you're answering that question, what is freedom? Maybe I'll call it physical freedom. So when we think about freedom, you can't not acknowledge the freedom to physically be where we want to be, right? The freedom of mobility, the freedom to go where you want to go and stand where you want to stand and live where you want to live and travel where you want to travel. A physical freedom is maybe one of the first things that come to mind. We can't help but think about the opposite of a physical freedom, which would be a prison, which would be locked up, which would be behind bars, which would be restrained to a area, which would be not allowed, right, to go where we want. For sure, all of that would be the opposite of what we think freedom is. And I know this one is, is something that is close to all of our hearts over the last couple of years as going through pandemic and, and navigating how we respond in a way that gets us all through it. We all went through seasons where that value of physical freedom, right, got checked, right? All of a sudden where we maybe couldn't go or shouldn't have gone exactly where we want, maybe for the right reason and for the right intentions and maybe ultimately for the right outcome. But just the thought of that being threatened or taken away instantly elevates the value and the importance and the gratitude we should have on our own physical freedom, the ability to, to sit up here on top of a mountain, right, in the morning or, right, travel where we want to go. And we got to remind ourselves there are still certain places in the world where a physical freedom doesn't exist. So for those of us that are blessed and fortunate to be in a place where we can have our physical freedom today, we should not take that for granted, right? And that's, that's something that on the 4th of July is at the top of a list that we, we thank the individuals for the service that allow for the physical freedom that we have in this country. And I'm sure if you're watching this, the majority of you are in a place where you have that physical freedom. And I think that is an important layer. And I don't want to de-emphasize right, or minimize that as it is a part of our freedom. A lot of times beyond physical freedom, when we think freedom, especially all the entrepreneurial minds out there, you can't help but think about financial freedom. Right? What is a financial freedom, a, an ability today in a time where, where things revolve around economics, right? Money is a vehicle. A financial freedom is an element of freedom. And again, we might go to the opposite, being in a place where you don't have means or you don't have finances to do the things you want or even have the bare necessities definitely challenges the nature of what freedom means to most of us. What's interesting about financial freedom, though, is so often we overemphasize, I think, what it takes to have financial freedom. We think financial freedom means some obscene amount of money, some 
endless amount of zeros in the bank account, some never ending flow of abundance of income and all that stuff is phenomenal and is possible. And there's nothing wrong with having the desire to go after it. We do live in a time and a place where opportunity is endless more than ever before. But I will say none of that is needed, in my opinion, for a financial freedom. Guys, a financial freedom, emphasis on freedom, comes down to an income that is greater than living expenses. In its most simple form, if you have an income that comes in that is greater than your living expenses, you have a financial freedom. And there's two sides of that equation, income, but people forget about the other side, expenses. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there and I've met a lot of people in my life and I've been in seasons in my life where, you know, income was what most people would put as extremely, extremely high. But if you're in a place where income is extremely high, but your expenses, your lifestyle is higher, you are not in a place of financial freedom. And I meet people and I have people in my life close today whose income is not something that you would say is revolutionary, is not something you would say is, wow, that's what I'm striving for. But you know what? They manage to keep their living expenses below their income and they have a financial freedom. Some would argue that that lifestyle right, has a greater freedom than the person that makes a million dollars a month but spends a million and five. And there are people out there that do that. You know, and I won't go on a side tangent of the, the minimalist philosophy But there's merit, right, to that lifestyle or the essentialist philosophy. There's merit to those lifestyles. So just keep in mind in a financial freedom, it is an element of freedom. There's two sides, the income and the expense side that you can control. And and if I were to add one more layer to the equation, it's, it's how long of what I would call a runway, right? If your income got turned off completely today, how long of a runway of savings do you have on your current living lifestyle can you go and I think everybody you know requires a different amount for them to feel free for some people maybe three months is a long enough safety net for some people it might be six months for some people a year for some people they might need two years or more but you got to figure out for your own financial freedom right an income that's greater than expenses and a safety net that gives you peace of mind so if everything were to get deleted tomorrow, you have enough time to go rebuild. In my mind, that's the structure of a financial freedom and you can work your way up from there. But financial freedom, by all means, is an element of freedom today. You can't ignore that. But don't get stuck in a situation where you're constantly chasing the things, constantly chasing right what media persuades us we need in order to be successful and getting yourself in a situation where you're in a hedonic treadmill where all of a sudden you're making money but your expenses and lifestyle supersede. That's the opposite of freedom. I think there's more layers to freedom though if we keep peeling back the onion. I I think we'd think about freedom, we'd talk about time freedom. I think now more than ever we're hearing more conversation even on time freedom in conjunction with financial freedom or physical freedom. And time freedom is not just the ability, right, to do what we want in the time we have, but to control the time that we're putting in. You know, having the ability to control our calendar, our own life today is is constantly getting higher. Matter of fact, there's been different um, surveys and research projects done over the last few years that people are now saying that that freedom you don't measure time freedom it used to be measured in in a year like how many days off you get a year right or it used to be measured in a month right in a work week where now people are measuring time freedom by control over a day can you control when and what you do in a day that's the element of freedom that people are placing on time today control over a calendar to do what you want, right? When you want within the 24 hours of a single day, let alone a week, let alone a month, let alone a year. So doing what we want within our calendar and and ultimately I think time freedom is within the time that we are putting in doing something that we love to do that excites us, right? That ignites us 
at the end of the day, time is life. Life is time. Time is the most valuable thing we have. And therefore, the freedom to decide what we do and when we do within the time, within our life, is at the core of what freedom is about. I think those are some of the obvious probably that came to mind first and foremost, right? Our, our physical freedom, our financial freedom, our time freedom. I, I, I think if we go even a layer deeper, I think there's an emotional freedom. And I think an emotional freedom supersedes everything that we just talked about because an emotional freedom has to do with the feeling we have within our own conversation, right? Our emotional response to any given situation and the ability to be in control of how we respond, the ability to be in control of how we feel, the ability to have our emotions be something that amplifies life and allows us to experience life and allows us to get the most out of life and not the opposite, not get hijacked emotionally by a trigger, not let a news headline or post or conversation or any sort of other trigger hijack the way that we feel in that moment, right, or in that situation, that would be the opposite of an emotional freedom. An emotional freedom is the ability, the freedom to be able to direct and guide our emotions in a way that best serves us. And at a time today, guys, where there's so much conversation on mental health and so many people going through so many things, which are real things, which are real struggles as an element of the circumstances we've all been in, the the environment we are all in right now, there is something that is broken and something that is not working in the construct of today that's causing such a rise. You can call it mental health, but I would call it a lack of emotional freedom where you no longer have the freedom to control our own response. And you could be in a situation where you have your physical freedom. You maybe even have your financial freedom. Maybe you even have the opportunity for your own time freedom. But if you don't have your emotional freedom within all of that, well, then what's the value of everything above? And I said at the beginning, it's layers. And I said that I think there's one element of freedom that we're talking about that's, that's maybe the ultimate collection, right, of all of those layers. And if you look at those things, and I'm sure there's more freedoms that you would define. And if there's others that come to mind, please list them below. I'd, I'd love your perspective. I'd love to add to my perspective into the list. But if I were to try to create a summary, something that captures all of the above, I think the ultimate freedom, the ultimate freedom, we get down to the core, the feeling of being free, right? The freedom that we all seek. I think the ultimate freedom supersedes physical, supersedes financial, supersedes time, supersedes emotional. I think all of those come together in a freedom to be yourself. A freedom to be genuinely, authentically who you were created and designed to be. I think that is the ultimate freedom. Now go with me here, because it's not just a cliche and something to write off. I've heard something like that before. At the end of the day, we were all created with a certain unique combination, right? A combination of it all. Call it talents, call it gifts, call it unique experiences and references and perspectives the accumulation of everything we were given by nurture and everything that's been around us, right? By nature, who we were born into, the friends that we have, all of those infinite combinations equate to you. One and only, one of whatever, seven billion, one of one, you. You are you, I am me, every single one watching this, we're all unique. And I think the ultimate freedom is the freedom to be genuinely yourself in any and every situation. Isn't that the ultimate freedom? To say the opposite, wouldn't wouldn't the opposite of freedom to be such a unique, amazing combination of yourself and be in situations where you can't be who you are? And it sounds pretty funny when I put it that way, but isn't every day we put in an environment where that's challenged? 
And I think if we we cut through it all and get down to the core and speak truth, it comes down to a a judgment, right? A judgment of others that cause us to maybe shape or limit or redirect or water down or adjust or adapt in some way who we are. And yeah, I would love to say, man, it would be great to live in a world that is judgment free. Wouldn't it be amazing to somehow get to an environment where there was not judgment of one another that that just wasn't a thing. Therefore, there wasn't something that would challenge us to change or not be ourselves. But I don't see that coming anytime soon. So I think the, the next best thing to an environment without judgment would be getting to a place where an environment that has judgment no longer affects us. In other words, it's not the judgment that's the issue. It's our own fear of that judgment that's the issue. If we can't control the environment around us, we got to learn to control the environment within us. That's the only thing we can control. So to get to a place where we don't fear what other people may think, we don't think about how other people may judge. We don't spend one ounce of energy through the lens or the eyes of somebody else to allow it to change or shape who we're designed to be. We just be. You guys, that can be at the biggest level. That could be you sitting here watching this right now saying, well, Blake, I don't know if that's me. I'm calling you out. If you have an idea that you're passionate about and you haven't taken that step, you can tell yourself a million and one excuses excuses only right are are great to the person creating them or you can cut through it all and say hey you haven't taken the step because maybe you have a fear of failure maybe a fear of rejection maybe a fear of if it doesn't work all of those things guys are a fear of judgment of what other people might think and look on you. So if you have a big idea, something you want to create, something you want to do, if you haven't made a, a shift, if you're stuck in a career path that you know is draining you, you know is not what you're meant to, the only reason you haven't made the shift into a new direction is is this right here. It's the only reason. And it could be something big that's holding you back. Or it can be small adjustments every single day. It could be you not saying what you believe because of, fear of confrontation. You not putting yourself out there because of fear what other people may think. You not saying the thing that needs to be said because you don't want to deal with what comes back. Because every single day in the littlest ways or the biggest ways, if we're adjusting who we are in order to fit a mold because of a fear of a judgment, isn't that the opposite of a freedom? One of my favorite books, it's a morbid title, but it's a great book. The Top Five Regrets of the Dying chronicles the top consistent regret patterns of people in the later years of their life. And the number one regret, the number one regret people have is they didn't live a life true to themselves. All right, the number one regret, I wish I would have lived a life more true to myself not the life others expected of me. Translation, ultimate freedom is living the life we were created for, made for, designed for, not some other diluted, minimized, adapted, adjusted version, constantly trying to meet an expectation or our perception of an expectation of another. Because wouldn't it be a shame to have a whole life which on one end so long, on the other end is so quick. And maybe we're blessed right now, blessed to have a life with all the layers of freedom. Maybe we have a life of physical freedom right now. Maybe we have a life of financial freedom or could create that with some adjustments to our expenses. Maybe we have a life of time freedom or could create that, right, by going in a direction that we're passionate about. Maybe we fight and we learn to have a life where we have our emotional freedom. But if we have all of those layers and we don't live a life true to ourselves of who we are, is that really freedom? Because in my mind, that's a cell 
It's around you wherever you go, whatever time it is, whatever you're doing. A self-imposed prison where you have the lock and you have the key. And you guys, there's no worse prison than a prison that you can't get out of and goes with you wherever you physically are. And that would be the opposite of freedom. So I think freedom is something that's built into all of us. That's my conversation for freedom today. And my hope for all of you is that you have all of the layers. And if not, you pursue all of the layers, but ultimately don't lose sight of what we're really going for, which is an ultimate freedom to be ourself. And that's something, guys, we can choose to start living instantly in any given moment, right here and right now, as we pursue all the other layers that freedom can have and bring. One review from the top. Beautiful day. Hope everybody is having an amazing start of their summer. Hope everybody this week thinks about the freedoms that we all have, expresses some gratitude, right, for the freedom and the opportunity for the freedoms all around us in this day and age, and maybe make some decisions personally to pursue the greatest freedom of all, and that's the freedom to let the world know who you are. Not a watered down version, not an adapted version, not an adjusted version. I wanna, I wanna see you unapologetically, raw, authentically, genuinely you. Because to me, that is the ultimate freedom. Let's go have the freedom to show the world who we really are. Have a great day, everybody. Hey guys, one last thing. I'm super excited that this new podcast, The Live by Design, just went live. You see, I designed the show to bring you inspired thoughts and fascinating conversations with the world's most impactful people, to provide transformative principles and practices to help you wake up, move toward your meant to, and feel fully alive. And I'd love for you to help me spread the word now. Simply subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on this platform right now. So if I've ever given you value, please do me this personal favor and go subscribe now. And if you found today's episode helpful in any way, make sure you share this with at least one friend today. You have the power right now to change someone's day. So send them a text message with a link to alivebydesign.com or simply copy and paste the link right from this podcast platform. Who's one person you know right now that you want to see succeed, that you want to see grow, that you want to see feel more alive? Shoot them a text with your largest takeaway from today and be a light in their day. And if you were referred here by a friend, make sure you shoot them a text back and say thank you. I'd love to hear from you directly on what you got from today's podcast. So if you're up for it, drop by my Instagram at Blake Mallon and shoot me a DM. And as always, thank you for showing up. I'm grateful for you. And I hope our time together today in some small way helped you feel a little more alive. Until next time.